but I would invite you to um, look at the, um, even the, those on Zoom, there's a color picture on the, the front of the bulletin, and I made a slightly bigger one of it here. And, um, this is from a series of art, pieces of art that were based on the lectionary readings that were done about 50 years ago in the African country of Cameroon. And the university in the United States who manages all the lectionary readings, they have this artwork there that we are able to use. And I use it a lot for helping us to have more insight, um, looking at it from someone else's point of view, um, an artist, or it could be a musician. In this case, it's an artist. But we get more insight into scripture readings, and then we can see the interpretation of that artist, and then it can help us with the other interpretations that are there. So in this picture of Jesus, there's the 10 men that Jesus healed from leprosy, and it invites us to imagine what those men, and possibly their families too, must have felt. And so I invite you to look at this while I just offer how I see this picture. This picture opens up our eyes and our hearts, and it depicts the words of the scripture reading, it puts them into pictures, and then it also depicts things that aren't necessarily mentioned in the passage that we just heard, so that's going beyond the words. So we see all 10 of the men celebrating in this picture, one in the foreground and the others in a group, even though we heard that only one of them had turned around and gone back to praise God and to say thank you to Jesus. That man who did that is kneeling in front of Jesus and you can see he's got very long arms and they're outstretched and there's just to me a look of such joy and wonder on his face as he's looking up at Jesus. And if you look really closely you can see that Jesus is holding on to one of the man's arms with a pretty sturdy grip. How long had it been since that man who was a leper, who was excluded from society, how long would it have been since he had been touched by another person, someone who didn't run away from him, and now he's being touched by Jesus? This suggests that Jesus actually was trying to help the man get up again. Um, he had asked the man to do it. He said, get up and go on your way, and that must have been a nice thing to say, and not just a marching order, but he was going to help him. So this man didn't have to get up on his own. And then he could leave the village where those men had been living in exile, and they were exiled again because of their skin conditions, which are lumped together into the category of leprosy. And there's a lot more to see in this picture too. The other nine men look very joyful. They're in groups in the background and they're stretching out their arms. They're raising their arms up in the air and some of them have had crutches. Their skin must have deteriorated and they needed the help to walk and some of them are throwing their crutches up in the air. And if you look closely on the left and the right, you see a few children and you see a couple of women and I was wondering, I don't know the answer to this, but since lepers had to live separately from the main society and these people were living on the edges in between Samaria and Galilee, you know, maybe their families came to see them in the village, but they had to stand back. They could only look from a distance, you know, looking at them, maybe hoping to have some contact, but not being able to have that physical contact. And to me, that resonates and to me with what we went through in the pandemic, all those times when we couldn't visit in the hospital or in a care facility, and you had to find other ways of doing it, even you know, going to the edges, looking in the windows into a nursing home or going in some other way to have your visit. But we did find ways to do that and people must have done that then. And you can only imagine, this isn't said, but you can imagine the joy of the families after those men were healed and those families were able to be back together again after so much time of separation and isolation. So this particular piece of art, as the other pieces of art in this series do, this piece offers us a very empathetic view and it's a very human view of the people in the story. Oh, these are the people that Jesus healed and released from their illness. And yes, it does go beyond some of what the scripture said, but things that sometimes are left out. There's a pattern in the gospels that sometimes the gospel writers, in this case, Luke, they sometimes leave out a detail because they want to focus on an important point or a theme to them. So it doesn't mean that detail couldn't have happened, but sometimes it doesn't make the cut, so to speak, when they're editing what they're writing. 
And this picture, importantly, this leaves open the possibility, not only from this artist, but this was in other commentaries that I read, traditional biblical commentaries. We don't really know what, what happened with the other nine men, even though Jesus asks. And it does leave open the possibility that not only were they so joyful, they were also very grateful too. But the difference, and this is a point from Luke, the difference is they didn't go right away to say thank you. Um, the other nine, that's what Jesus calls them. Where are the other nine? <laughs> um, they are celebrating, but maybe they ran to their families first. Maybe they said, oh, I have to see my wife. I have to see my children. And maybe later they remember to give thanks to God or Jesus. We don't hear that. But it doesn't mean that they weren't grateful. It does mean we should consider when we turn to God and who we thank first and, you know, maybe our priorities, but it's so human. And I certainly could imagine myself wanting to run and, you know, call my father to tell him something. And maybe later on I would remember that I also thank God. So this is a very human thing. The only thing that you might miss out on if we wait too long to thank people, if those men did decide to go back and thank Jesus, he probably wasn't still there because... They were sent away to the priest. He sent them to the priest so that they could be proven that they, the priest would validate that they were clean and, and cured from their disease. But Jesus, again, was on his way to Jerusalem. So if they waited too long, they might have missed the opportunity not only to thank him, but to be with him. We don't actually know what happened after that point. After the time that Jesus recognized this man and called him a Samaritan and a foreigner and praised him, you know, helped him. We don't hear what happens after that, but we do hear what happens before. And this is hearing in the scripture reading. And sometimes this gets left out when people are thinking about this story. Jesus told the man that did come back that his faith had made him well, but it says that all 10 men, all of them recognized Jesus when he entered that village that was on the border. And they all cried out to him together and asked him to show them mercy. It says that Jesus cured every one of those 10 men. All of them, he told them to go um, immediately show themselves to the priests again so that they could be validated that they were clean again. And all 10 of those men did exactly what Jesus said to do. They didn't push back on him. They didn't ask him, why are we doing this? And these were a mixed group of people. There were Samaritans and Jews and maybe some other people. They had different religious perspectives, but they all followed Jesus and did what he said. Every one of those 10 men showed their faith in Jesus. And he did heal them all, as I said. And so he really was healing them even before he had any sign of their faith other than the fact that he listened to they listened to his voice and they did what he said. And so again, that man who did return to him in those ways didn't have more faith than the other people did. They were all in it together. But that man got some extra blessings because he went back. It says he was praising God. He thanked Jesus because he realized that Jesus was one who actually healed him. So even if he wanted to thank God, Jesus was the one who did it. So there's a relationship that the man recognized between Jesus and his father. That man stopped in his tracks. He returned to Jesus. Jesus touched him, helped him up, praised him about his faith, and that was an accolade, and then sent him on his way. Now, um, for those of us, a reminder from last week, if he were here, um, Jesus again is on his way to Jerusalem. He had been upset with his actual disciples, the disciples and the inner circle apostles. They weren't having faith in Jesus. And last week, the apostles said, increase our faith. And they really were sort of desperate. And Jesus wasn't happy with them. He's at this point, again, almost going to the point where he's going to be arrested and killed. And his inner circle people aren't believing in him. And one of the points that Luke is making through this story is these other people believed in Jesus. So Jesus is there. He points out that this man had faith, that he was a Samaritan and a foreigner. These people didn't have good relationships at times with the Jewish people. 
but this points out that many people from different backgrounds can believe in Jesus and do what he says. And also Jesus graciously, through his own love and compassion, gave them the gifts of healing and wholeness that they needed so much so that they not only would be cured, but also be restored to their family and the society. So this was open to all people from all backgrounds. And this is one of the messages that runs like a theme all the way through the Gospel of Luke. And finally, the story that we did here this morning, where we heard it read and also looked at it through the piece of artwork. This illustrates the importance of giving thanks. Simple thing to do. Um, sometimes we can do it and sometimes we can't. But faith and gratitude go together. And I think we could find ways to give thanks to God and Jesus and the Spirit, trying to do it first, if we can, before we go on to thank other people or other um, organizations that helped us but if not, one of the things we also learn in the story is it's not too late to turn back and run and go up to Jesus or to God and say, thank you, God. And that would also be good. Amen.